Hi, I'm JD, and this week on NASA Now, we'll examine NASA's use of satellites to monitor climate change. But before we get to that, let's find out what else is happening at NASA Now. <laughs> NASA's epoxy mission successfully flew by Comet Hartley 2 recently, sending back never-before-seen images of the comet nucleus. This is the second comet that the spacecraft has encountered. On the original Deep Impact mission, back in July 2005, the spacecraft encountered the comet Temple 1. Scientists recently returned to the Southern Hemisphere, where NASA's Operation Icebridge mission has begun its second year of airborne surveys over Antarctica. The mission monitors changes in sea ice, ice sheets, and glaciers. Now let's take a look back to the past. October 1975, GOES-A, the first satellite in NOAA's geosynchronous weather satellite system, is launched. Renamed GOES-1 upon reaching orbit, the satellite continuously monitors weather until it is deactivated by NASA in 1985. They say the satellites in NASA's A-Train are helping us to better understand the Earth system. Here to fill us in is Dr. Lynn Chambers, director of the Ceres School Project. My name is Lynn Chambers. I work on a number of projects that have to do with um, Earth science, atmospheric science, and science education. So the concept of the Earth as a system is the, the idea that when you look at the Earth, everything is really connected to everything else, and you can't really look at one part of the Earth in isolation of everything else. And so Earth system science is this understanding that you can't just, for example, look at, okay, well, we're going to cut down the, the whole forest in this area and expect that that won't have an impact on some other things, like, you know, it may change the rainfall patterns. Um, it may change how snow stays or doesn't stay on that surface. All aboard! The Atrian uh, Satellite Constellation is a group of satellites that are in very close proximity to each other in orbit so that they see basically the same part of the Earth at the same time or within 15 minutes or so of each other. And that lets us really get at a lot of different parts of the Earth system process um, looking at things in the atmosphere, looking at things on the surface, um, looking at vegetation, all of that within a very short time period so that we're seeing the same occurrences. Each of the satellites does have its own focus. Aqua is looking mostly at the, the things in the water cycle. Um, Aura is looking at atmospheric chemistry and pollution. CloudSat and Calypso are looking at clouds and aerosols. But then they also all work together. So by taking the data from those different areas, you can learn, for example, about the effect of pollution on clouds. Aerosols are a pretty important and, and not as well understood component of the Earth system and the atmosphere. Um, and the Calypso spacecraft in particular has been looking at aerosols and there's some new spacecraft entering the atrium that will be helping with that. Aerosols have a number of different aspects to them. One, they can reflect sunlight so they can have a cooling effect on the Earth. They can also absorb sunlight depending on what the aerosols are made of and that can have some interesting effects. And then they also have some very complicated effects on clouds. So aerosols serve as cloud condensation nuclei. That's what the little cloud droplets form around. So if you have a lot of aerosols, you tend to get smaller cloud droplets, and that tends to mean no rain. Understanding the Earth as a system is understanding what we call the energy budget or the radiation budget of the Earth. Basically, in order for the Earth to have a stable system over time where the climate is not changing, you have to have a balance between the energy coming in from the sun and the energy that leaves the Earth. And so one of the things that we're looking at is understanding how um, different parts of the Earth system control that balance. In the school project, we're asking them what clouds are in the sky. 
but we're also asking them what's on the surface. We're asking them, you know, is there snow on the surface, which clearly would change the reflectance. Uh, we're asking them, is it raining? And then we're asking them about the vegetation on the surface. Um, is it currently growing? In which case, you know, when the satellite looks down, it sees a nice green area. And then we also ask for information about air temperature, relative humidity, and pressure. So we're really, you know, it's not a complete Earth system picture, but it's a pretty good cross-disciplinary look at the Earth. And the reason we do it is because all of those factors affect what the satellite will see from space. Did you know the Aqua spacecraft carries six state-of-the-art instruments to observe the Earth's oceans, atmosphere, land, ice and snow covers, and vegetation? Aqua is a joint project involving the United States, Japan, and Brazil. Today we learned that by combining the observations from each of the satellites in the A-Train convoy, scientists are able to gain a better understanding of the connections in the Earth system. Now it's your turn. Check out these resources and activities on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. This week you and your teammates can visit the Cool Science webpage to learn more about Aqua's mission and how it helps us better understand the hydrosphere and its relationship to other parts of the Earth's system. To access these resources and activities, visit the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Join us again next week when we'll learn about NASA's Operation Ice Bridge. We'll see you next time on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.